So this will be a three card you pick uh, energy read with the diet cross finish. So hope you like it. If you do like the video, do like it. And if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. I am Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. So like I said, this will be a three card you pick uh, energy read. So the, there'll be three cards out there. There'll be yes, no, might be maybe, and uh, you get to pick. Make sure you have a question to ask, and, um, and then after we finish with that, and you get a yes, no, or maybe, then I'll do a dyadic cross for each of those to finish it up. So, so my suggestion: take a minute, get something to drink, uh, take a deep breath, calm yourself, consider the question or questions that you want to ask. You can pick one, two, three cards, any of you know any combination of that that you like, and then uh, we'll get into the read for you. Okay, so these cards are, are the, just the latest thing, I believe. So this is by the, the artist uh, is Ciolo Ciolo Thompson, Ciolo Thompson, and it's, this is called the Line Strider Tarot. The Line Strider Tarot it comes in a great box, and it's, it's got some beautiful imagery on the outside of the box, and a nice little introduction back here. Uh, I like this is Body, Mind, and Spirit Tarot. So very interesting. But uh, the box itself is one of the cool uh, magnetic snaps. It's beautiful. It's got a nice glossy finish. It really feels uh, like a, a precious uh, stationery would come in here. The book is amazing quality. I mean, I don't, I don't know if you can see it, but like each one of these pages is just there's really good quality. And the book is full color, and it's interesting here because it talks just a little bit about Solio Thompson. And I'll just tell you very quickly that uh, she's a self-taught visual artist, and she lives in the Seattle, Washington area. And um, so this is her first uh, deck. So they're the first published deck anyway. And then in, over here she's talking about this was a journey for her. And uh, the Line Strider deck uh, has got a lot of animal uh, imagery. And that it brings in some uh, tarot images from her childhood. Now she grew up uh, where? She grew up in, she was born in uh, Western Samoa. And then uh, she also uh, lived in Bolivia. And so uh, she has an amazing uh, childhood and, um, and brought a lot of attention to the cards. So there we go. The book is fantastic. The cards themselves are also pretty amazing. But I mean, they're a gentle spirit. They're a good quality of card. You know, they're stiff. They're uh, slicky, but they don't cause a problem. They shuffle uh, really well. And um, so, you know, they're just great. And then they're very easy to interpret. And the reason is that uh, each card really tells you right there what's on the card. Okay, so you don't have to just rely on the imagery, but if you really look at what's drawn on there, it's pretty amazing. I mean, and then you start to wonder why did she uh, allow, uh, allow this animal for this particular uh, divination. So the beautiful cards, good suggestions in the book, how to um, you know use them, and I just lay them out like this so you have a chance to look at uh, more than just the few cards that uh, you know reader pulls out when they're doing our shtick, and then. Um, you know, maybe um, you might decide uh, you like the cards. If you don't get to see a lot of cards, I know when I was just watching um, this stuff on uh, YouTube, I wanted to see more cards than I was seeing. So there we go. Okay, so here we go. This will be a three-card you pick dyadic cross finish. Three-card you pick dyadic cross finish. Three-card you pick dyadic cross finish. Let's see how this goes for you. Three card you pick, dyadic cross, finish for you. So one, two, three. So if you haven't already, make sure you take some time, take a deep breath, uh, get yourself in the right frame of mind for this, decide what questions are important to you, Deep breath in, slowly out, and choose a card. One, two, three. One, two, three. Remember, you can stop the tape and take a minute. One, two, three. One, two, and three. 
And then we'll reveal these one at a time. These will be yes, no, or maybe. I may jot down on the side here whether we get to a yes, no, or maybe. The first card, if that's the one you chose, is the High Priestess. Could not be a, a more a better card to get. This is a huge yes card. You have all the power, all the authority, everything you need to for this, whatever this issue is for you. So the High Priestess is very encouraging. She brings with her uh, uh, contemplative uh, self knowledge and an abundance of self-worth and if you're not feeling that stop this tape right now put your head down and imbibe yourself with that energy i have what it takes to do this i am the high priestess i have all the power that i need to make this decision do that okay now if you chose number two um, for your card then that's the hermit the hermit is equally important Okay, this is a yes card, but the hermit is telling us that just like this, this is uh, signified by this bear. Do you see the head of the bear right there? And he's kind of looks like he's poked his head out from the den. He's got this lantern hanging around his neck to provide light to let him see what's uh, ahead of him, uh, how to proceed. So the hermit is cautious and thoughtful and knowledgeable and knows when to make a move and when to hold back. Okay, and that's what, what you have with you right now for this issue. Okay the the foresight the courage to not move okay until you're sure about how you want to move forward it doesn't mean that you should be paralyzed but you should take a deep breath and understand uh, what you're surrounded by before you come out of that den number two card the hermit yes card yes and yes he chose number three the Ace of Cups, another great, big, emotional, compassionate yes card. And I love this. What is this? It's a cat of some sort. I can't really tell you what kind, but it looks like a, a wilder cat, not like a house cat. So this is a great, big offer of compassion, a huge cup that this cat can lean down and take a nice lap out of, okay? So this is a yes card, and it's telling you that you should feel uh, confidence. You should feel compassion if you're not feeling it. And, um, and yeah, this is something you can move forward with in a thoughtful, uh, a considerate way. So that's the third card, if that's what you chose as your card. Now turn two of these over, and we'll put this one down as a signifier, the High Priestess. Beautiful card to get uh, in this instance. I love that card, and I love these cards, as a matter of fact. So the High Priestess is telling us, listen, you have everything that you need to make this decision. Um, the High Priestess is confident, so if you're not feeling confident, I want you to. I want you can you can change your frame of mind. If you're not feeling confident, feel confident. And if you are feeling confident, that's beautiful. But just take a deep breath. Look how this high priestess is taking a moment to center herself, and that's what you can do. Anytime uh, you're going to do something important, you want to get a firm footing. You want to steel yourself, consider your options, and then you want to move forward with that decision. We're going to take five cards to finish this off. So this is one, two. Three, four, and five. Five cards for this High Priestess. This big yes card, really full of, of everything that she needs to make this thing uh, happen in the best way that it can. The challenge to that, however, for this Diana Cross is strength. Okay, strength, and look how it's signified here. There's a beautiful, big, strong lion. This uh, woman has latched onto that lion's mane. She's kind of riding his strength right into the issue, uh, whatever it is. Do you see her right here? Beautiful. So this, this strength as a challenge to the high priestess can let you say, okay, I feel very strong about this. I can make this happen. But this could perhaps say, take a moment to center yourself. It, it, soak up that strength, but let it build within your muscles and then pounce just like that lion would. Okay, so that's strength. The basis of this reading then is the seven of cups. You know, the seven of cups is having everything you need to make a decision or understanding that there can be some illusion and delusion along the way. So do you see this woman in this picture? She's looking up to the heavens. She's trying to make a choice about what she, she's just about ready to reach up here and, and, and pluck one of these issues out of the air. And it'll be the right one for her because she's not grasping wildly. She's contemplatively making a decision, okay? And then she'll reach up with strength and move forward with her choice. So that's the basis of this reading. Um, very good. The past of this reading 
is this Ten of Swords. And the Ten of Swords is telling you this is the end of a cycle. And it's, it's, it's depicted here by this, um, would this be an antelope? It's a horned uh, uh, deer-like animal. And look, he's just been stopped in his track. These Ten of Swords have skewered him and he stopped. And it may be that you have come into this feeling wounded or someone in this issue has come into this with, with this sort of an energy around it. And that's fine. Um, you know, we have inevitable uh, endings all throughout our existence that both we have to face them, contemplate on what's happened, uh, get the strength to move forward, and then reach up and make a, a, a solid choice. In the sky of this reading, then, is this Four of Swords. And again, this Four of Swords is telling us, take a break, take a rest. Let me study this card because I'm not clear how, oh yeah, this is a lion. <clears throat> so this is beautiful. So you can see right here, this is kind of the lion's face. His eyes closed, that's his nose. His paws are on top of each other right here. And this sort of truth, justice, rules, and law, it's not upright. It's pointing down, telling us, let's take a moment to pin, let's put a pin in this, okay? And consider what our options are. And then you can even see that this lion is sort of crowned regally. And then, then we can bring our head up and move forward with whatever it is that we need to do. So that's the sky of this reading, really being contemplative about what we're going to do. And then, look, our strength is, is uh, uh, doubled here with this uh, lion in the sky being contemplated about moving forward. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, the likely outcome of this whole thing for you, if you chose this number one card, this big yes card, is the Seven of Swords. The Seven of Swords is... is typically feeling betrayed. You know, this is typically thought of as a theft, a betrayal, and an abuse, and a disappointment. This person, you can just make them out here. You can see the legs right here, lean forward, carrying some of these swords with them, and a couple are left behind, okay? So the outcome of this is someone is going to feel either empowered or, or left out. That doesn't mean that this is a bad situation. Sometimes when we have to make yes decisions, when we have to move forward with contemplation, it does mean that, that they're difficult decisions. And you have to understand that if someone is going to be um, uh, feeling abject about that, sometimes that's what life is, okay? And beautiful things can come out of that kind of a feeling. Let's go over it again. The high priest is telling us, listen, you've got everything you need to make this happen. You have the strength within you to latch onto that and let it carry you forward. We want to make sure that we or contemplate all of the choices that we have and then reach up and pluck one out. There's been an abrupt stop. That cycle has, has, has come to an end and something else is, about to ha is, else is about to happen. And then this lion here, with his putting a pin in it, is really considering those options and then understand that one of those options may mean that someone feels left out or, or left behind or dejected in some way and sometimes it's just the way it is but that doesn't mean it's a bad outcome it just means that's a stepping stone that's a stumbling block that you have to step over and then move forward in this decision this is a very strong a very positive reading for you if you chose the number one card okay so we'll put that aside i'm going to leave her right upright there and we'll reincorporate these right back into the pack and get on to the second choice okay so i love that reading the first reading that we had there if you chose the number two card, of course, the signifier for that is the hermit. And the hermit is telling us, let's be contemplative. You can see that bear poking his head out of the den with his light shining the way before he makes a decision. He hasn't bolted out of that den, or she. The, this bear has decided, no, I'm going to see, take the temperature. I'm going to put my nose up and see which way the wind blows. And then I'll decide if I'm going to fully come out of this uh, den, out of this hibernation, or if I'm going to move forward. Okay, so we're going to take five cards to finish off this divination. We chose number two. That's one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, we're going to put these cards back over here just to work on that last issue. And if you chose the number two card, the Hermit is contemplation with with knowledge. Okay, this is this is a wizened uh, person. This Hermit, this bear. The challenge to that, though, is temperance. Beautiful. It's just almost a repeat of what we're talking about here. This um, incredible angel, look at the wings that are just draped behind this, this person. This could be a man, this could be a woman, but this is someone who is, is really balancing out, getting a feel for how this is going to move forward. So, and look, one toe in the water, one toe solidly on the ground. 
getting getting a temperature, some temperance on the issue. Okay, perfect. So this just um, verifies that, yeah, let's put our nose out and see what uh, is happening here before we jump forward. The basis of this reading then is the sun. This is a beautiful card. And if you can see it right under this lovely bush with this flower coming out the top, this rebirth, just under here, there's two little rabbits. They almost form a heart. They've got their heads together. They're getting some nourishment from the, the sunlight and the enlightenment that the sun brings to this issue. So the base of this reading is the sun. If you don't feel enlightened, if you don't feel like there's sun shining out there, it could be because you are being protected by the abundance of the sun. You're being, these these uh, animals under here may not feel the strength of the sun, but they're certainly benefiting from the, um, from the, the nourishment of the sun. That's the base of the reading. The past of this reading, then, is this Queen of Wands. This is a beautiful card to get. Look at this queen. She's looking, looking up into the sky a little bit. She's got a lovely cat of intuition on her shoulder. She's holding on to this wand, which is a plan. Uh, wands are motion, forward, fire, plans, actions. And so this queen is fully in control of the actions, of the decisions that have to be made with some intuition on top of it. And so that's how we come into this. That's how we come into this uh, issue that uh, you are concerned about. In the sky of this reading, then, is look at that. Four of Swords again. I love when the cards repeat. It just kind of verifies to me that they're in this with us, okay? So again, so this lion, has, you can see the paws right here. You can see the eyes of this lion closed, really taking a rest. This sword for me, this truth, justice, this rule, this law, has put a pin in this issue while this lion considers his strength, considers his options, gathers up his, his courage to move forward and to make a nice decision. Again, caution can't be uh, underestimated in this issue, or thoughtfulness at the very least. But the likely outcome for all of this <coughs> is this Eight of Swords. The Eight of Swords is feeling sometimes a little trapped. Remember, swords are rules, law, truth, justice, and all of those things, although they sound good, can be something that holds a person back, okay? But understand that, uh, yeah, you can move forward with this. So again, this is a positive reading with a cautious uh, undertone. Um, look outside, shine a light on the issue before you plunge out. Weigh the temperance, weigh the issues. It's almost an, an angelic gift that's been given to you. The sun was the whole underpinning this whole thing. The nourishment and the um, enlightenment of the sun is how you is how you come at this. And with this Queen of Wands in the past being in complete control intuitively of the action that has to come forward in the sky with this uh, lion as this Four of Swords again. Take a moment to consider everything that's involved, and then with this Eight of Swords understand that feeling if you are having that feeling of being trapped or maybe someone that's involved in this issue with you may be ha having that that uh, feeling and and you should recognize that and give them space to to shrink in and and let those binds uh, let them go this eight of swords truth justice rules law sometimes they feel like things that are keeping us uh, behind but they can be the very things that uh, catapult us forward very good reading nice positive uh, outcome there so that's the number two We'll reincorporate these right back into the pack and move forward with the last one, the last card if you chose number three. Signifier is this Ace of Cups. Love that animal there. I wish I could tell exactly what kind of a cat that is. It doesn't look like a domesticated cat to me. This looks like almost a, a puma or some sort of a, a, a very noble feline, okay? And really standing guard over that uh, compassion, that cup of, of emotion. So... Ace of Cups, big yes card, and let's see what the rest of this will tell us. Okay, five cards. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay, we're done with these cards. They've given us all the uh, knowledge and all the insight that we need. Okay, so Ace of Cups is a signifier, great big offer of compassion of, of for this uh, reading. The Hangman. Again, so this has been a theme throughout these readings today. You can see that this um, cat, again, okay, do you see this uh, tiger, perhaps, this striped tiger, is being uh, held up uh, by his foot. 
not by his tail, but by his foot. He's being forced. He's got his claws out because, you know, he's not going to like being held up like that. But he's being forced to get another perspective on this issue. Very interesting that we've got this this noble uh, cat here giving us a great big offer of compassion. But it's being challenged by taking a minute to get another angle on this. As as much as it might want you to put your claws out and, and, and fight it, just relax. Just relax and take another look at this from another way. The basis of this reading is the magician. This sweet little monkey here has all the tools that he needs to make this thing happen. He's, I see the pentacles here. I see the wand. Um, there's a sword of truth and justice. And somewhere in here, there's going to be a cup of compassion. I haven't quite made it out. But this little this little uh, monkey is the magician in this issue. Okay, And so he may seem scatterbrained at times, but no, he's got a, an exact... Um, a way to uh, bounce out of this thing and make it uh, happen. The past of this reading is the moon, and the moon is secrets being revealed. Look at this. We have a uh, either a wolf or a coyote, and we have a noble dog, and we have the secrets crawling out of the ocean, and the moon is in full bloom here, ready to go through those portals and sprinkling a little uh, uh, knowledge down onto the situation. So we came into this secrets being revealed, or maybe needing to be revealed even. And in the sky of this reading, we have the Page of Swords. You know, the page, I always tell you, is the least um, uh, has the least strength of all those royal court cards. But the swords are truth, justice, rules, and law. So this fellow, look, he's, he's holding his chin. He's got his hands cupped under his chin. His eyes are wide open. The breeze has kind of blown him back. Okay, and he's grasped onto that sword of truth, justice, rules, law, whatever it is that's important in your issue, and he's getting ready to take a step forward. The page brings this to the court to say, okay, this is what I have, and this is what we have to consider. So this is what's in the sky of this. Someone, uh, or the message that uh, one of these issues, truth, justice, rules, law, is what needs to be considered here, or at least can be considered here before we move forward. But the final outcome of this for you today with this Seven of Wands is... The Seven of Wands, you know what, I'm going to have to, because I really got caught up in that last uh, interpretation right there. So the Seven of Wands, we're going to look at my cheat sheet right here, holding for, oh, the Seven of Wands is so important, I forgot completely. The Seven of Wands in the typical right away deck is usually dis uh, displayed as someone on top of the hill holding one wand while they sort of fend off the other wands that are poking up like issues at the bottom. And that's what wands are, they're issues, they're plans, they're motions, they're fire, they're movement. And so what's happened is that this goat has balanced himself up on top here. We have this uh, fowl down here. We have this uh, fox-looking animal right here snapping back. And uh, this goat has said, okay, wait, I'm going to perch myself on this rock, and then I'm going to deal with these issues as they come about. So the Seven of Wands is understanding that you can, you do have the power, the balance, to, um, to consider this carefully before you move forward. So again, so we come to this as this puma-like animal with a great big offer of compassion. This uh, hanged man represented by this striped tiger is saying, listen, it may not be comfortable, but let's look at this from another angle. He's getting ready to twist himself around so he can land on his feet. The magician of this little monkey right here tells us that this is underpinned by all the authority, all the magic that we need to get this thing to work out. The moon are the secrets that uh, uh, encapsulate this situation. This page of swords is telling us, listen, this message of truth, just and rules, law is here for you to make a determination on. And the seven of wands are saying, yes, you can make a determination on that. You don't have to let these issues beat you up. You just stand firm and consider how you're going to go about this. So all of these readings today have been around taking your time and understanding the issue carefully before you move forward too quickly. It's all you can always um, uh, you can overcook the cake uh, or you can undercook the cake. If something's a little underdone, it's a little bit better than if it's overdone. Then, it, then it remain, there remains some room for you to move forward if something's not quite baked, uh, half-baked, huh? Um, but uh, if you overdo it, if you don't take the time and the consideration before you jump forward, then that's where you can have an issue. So I hope that was clear for you today. So I really genuinely hope that was useful for you. Uh, consider uh, the answers that you got and the situation that you're concerned about. If it didn't seem to land for you, that's fine. Uh, you know, it's not for you today. Just leave it alone and go to something else. But you might want to consider, is it, uh, does this click for someone you know or something that's coming up or uh, someone, um, you know, close to you? So, thanks. I'm Mark, My Journey Through Tarot. 
Tomorrow's another day. Stop by. We'll do it again. Ciao for now.